How can you make money in art? The big question is whether the starving artist mentality is actually real or whether there actually is money to be made in art. Whether it's design, video games, visual effects, or any other creative industry, most of us are not successfully earning the money and the success that we want in our creative field. So rather than miss out on this opportunity and get stuck like a lot of us have been in the past, not getting paid what we want, or getting the jobs that we want. I'm gonna show you the ways that myself and many others were able to build our success through strategies like building our personal brand around key high in demand software niches or needs of our clients. So studios and clients started to seek us out rather than us needing to apply for jobs and compete in the same job market as everybody else. Not to mention how I was able to triple my income just by slightly wording my services differently and how you can apply this to your own services as well. That and so much more. I'm Alan McKay. I've been working in the creative industry for nearly 25 years. I've ran my own successful creative studio, as well as working for studios like Industrial Light & Magic, Ubisoft, PSYOP New York and LA, Activision and many more. My goal is to teach artists and creatives to level up your career and make art your business. Let's dive in. So as your skills grow, so does the demand. I think it's important to understand that art is actually a career. You don't approach it like you would apply for a job at McDonald's. You know, a doctor, a lawyer, any of these things take a lot of time, a lot of commitment, a lot of effort and discipline to get to that point. So most of you along the way are going to quit, are going to change your mind because you're going to come up against that resistance. Typically, the difference between a career and a job is a job you walk in at KFC or wherever it might be and they'll show you the ropes and you get to work. A career is something that you invest in and you invest in yourself along the way. So it's going to be a lot of hard work and there's going to be a lot to learn, especially a lot to master. And the big thing is that you've got to be prepared to eat shit at the beginning. So just like any other industry, people start out in the mail room, they start out as a runner. This industry is no different. You've got to work your way up, you've got to prove your worth. And I really respect those who put in the time at the beginning, who are in the trenches, getting their hands dirty, because I think there's a lot of really valuable lessons, a lot of failure and a lot of resistance that we get along that way. But on top of that, you really begin to appreciate what you have once you do make it. And I think that that is the key thing that along the way, if you just have all the handouts, if your buddy give you that, that first job, a lot of the resistance that it took to get there, you miss out on. And I think that that is the critical stuff that really carves us out into the successful people down the line. So I feel like it's essentially natural selection where a lot of us along the way are going to drop out because we're fighting that resistance. But the ones who make it in are usually the ones who are going to make it in there for good. So the key goal here is polarity. So in the beginning, you want to do whatever it takes to land that first job. But one day, eventually, you want to be in a position where the studios will do whatever it takes to land you. Now, I was in disbelief at the very beginning of my career where I was just starting out, but I had a few friends who were highly successful. And I couldn't believe that studios would literally fly them from one side of the world to the other to meet up, wine them and dine them, and to really take care of them, pay them lots of money to convince them to work for them. Now, I was still in that position where I would fly halfway across the world and I would whine and dine and beg and plead if that would lead me to getting a job. So that's the polarity that eventually you can have it all. You can be in a position where you're in high demand, but right now you're in the same bucket as everyone else. So you've got to be the one that's doing the work and doing what you can to stand out. Now, this applies to everyone. I don't care where you're from or what your sub story is. It's an equal level playing field in 2019. I was a high school dropout from Australia, no money, no internet. I lived in a share house with 12 other people and my mom. We lived on government food stamps from time to time. There is no excuse. Now the, the, the amount of opportunities and the, how easy it is to get work compared to back then is so much easier. So whatever your excuse are, I think to take them all away turn your weaknesses into strengths. So if you say that I live in a third world country and you know there's no work here, whatever the excuse might be, I look at that as 
If the cost of living is really cheap, great, go on 99designs, go on Upwork, go on freelance, use this to your advantage to be able to triple your income by being able to take on jobs that others pay $300 for, maybe that's worth $900 in your currency, but either way, you make the most of it. If your country has a, a lower currency, then great, seek out other countries and, and higher currencies. I was making a fortune when I lived in Australia where it's about 65 cents to 70 cents to the US dollar. It meant that I was literally getting about 30% more income just by invoicing US clients opposed to Australia. So the key thing is there are no excuses. If you say there's no studios in your country, go work online or go to where the work actually is. So if you say that nobody hires foreigners, I'm an immigrant. I worked in Asia, in Europe, in America, in Canada. I live in the United States. I'm not from here, but you go to where the work was or is. For me, at the very beginning, it made sense to work local, build up my portfolio. I would work online. I would do whatever it took. But eventually, I would build up a strong enough portfolio. I front-loaded the, the work to get a visa. So when the time came and I qualified, I could move to the U.S. and I could work from here. So again, there's no excuses. So a lot of us say that, well, everyone's doing this, so why should I even bother? And that's your version of an excuse. Everyone else is doing it, so why should I even try? Here's the reality. You're right. Most of the people out there are doing exactly what you're doing. They, they make the excuse that everyone else is doing it, so why should I try at all? So a lot of us are still in the same bucket of putting in minimal effort opposed to the, the one or two of us who are actually willing to go out there and do whatever it takes to hustle and get the work. So simply by putting in that minimal effort, you're already ahead of most people. I recently put out an email, uh, my first ever email teardown is what I called it. And what this was, was an email and a video that I recorded on YouTube, which broke down a lot of the emails that I receive from people applying for jobs. Now, a lot of people were really shocked at the minimal amount of effort that people were putting into these emails. So instead of writing something that really glorifies your skills and, and sells the employer on why they should hire you, most people would fire out a link to the reel and think that's all they need to do or not even do that at all and, and basically say, hey, give me a job. So I think this is important for all of us as with that video, it made a lot of people realize that, wow, if I were just to put in that extra bit of effort, I'm already ahead of everyone else because most people are not putting in the effort. We assume that they are, but they're not. So two of my friends, John and Josh, who recently directed Kin, a feature film with Michael B. Jordan, James Franco. This was their first ever feature film. Now, back before they were big Hollywood directors, when we were teenagers in Australia, um, one thing that always stuck with me was that they seemed to win everything. They seemed to be going to some cool event, some uh, launch party, whatever it might be, all the time. And I remember asking them, I was 18 years old, and I said, like, why do you keep winning stuff? And it's like, well, we keep entering contests. And the thing is that everyone else just assumes that everyone else is applying and entering these contests, so they're not going to win. So nobody ever actually enters the contest. So we just enter everything and we win everything because no one else is putting in the effort. That stuck with me for the longest time because it applies to everything. The reason they're winning, the reason that they're now in Hollywood doing their thing is all because they were willing to try where most people weren't. And that's the problem is most of us make the excuse that everyone else is doing that, so why should I bother? When in reality, it's quite the opposite. I always say you gotta be in it to win it. And sometimes just showing up, just putting in the effort where no one else does is all you need. So sure, if you don't try, you have a 100% chance that you're not going to fail, but you also have a 100% chance of not succeeding as well. So again, putting in that minimal effort, at least you're creating an opportunity where you can succeed. That is the point where you can grow, and those opportunities are the ones that really lead to success. You need to stand out and build your brand. So at the start of your career, there's thousands of people who can do what you do. That's just the honest truth. So the idea is that eventually, you want to be able to do something that only you can do, that people only associate with you. The idea is to stand out. So passive is poison. You can't be passive in your career. You need to have goals and to be ever focused on hitting those goals always. Otherwise, you're like Sandra Bullock in Bird Box, floating downstream wherever the current takes you, blindfolded with monsters. 
It's important to set goals and to always be focused on reaching that someday goal, no matter what it is, no matter how unrealistic or unattainable it might seem. Having that is your sense of, of direction. It's your vector that you need to always be aligned with. Otherwise, we always have that analysis paralysis. We're always wondering what we should do, questioning ourselves. So having that dream, no matter how big it is, it doesn't matter. It's a sense of direction and we need that to be able to plot out our plan, our roadmap and move forward. So the less focused you are on making your own dreams happen, the more likely you'll be focused on making other people's dreams happen by working for them, by contributing to them because they have a plan, they're moving forward with it. So again, the more sense of direction you have, the more focused you're going to be. You don't want to be like cattle. You don't want to do what everyone else does. You don't want to be the in the average circle. You do you, focus on what matters and learn to stand out always in everything that you're doing. So as you grow, look at the ways to niche down and stand out. Look at what's trending, what new technology is out there, what new industries are coming up. Some of us hear about these new innovations and interruptions and instead of looking at that as a new opportunity, we get scared. Uh, we look at that as the industry is changing and we're all doomed, whatever it might be. So rather than being a negative Nancy, look at this as an exciting new way to access a, a new playing field, a new level that you can play in and be able to adapt and use that to your advantage. So when everyone else is still moving in, in the old circles, this is a chance for you to innovate and do something that is new before anyone else gets in there. So the whole key thing, as I mentioned before, is to stand out. So the key question is, is there such a thing as the starving artist? Now, for a lot of people, the, the term starving artist usually means a painter, someone who does what they love and they do it because they're passionate about it. But typically there isn't a roadmap, a goal, a way to monetize this and make this into a living. In other words, to make this a career. So in other words, you might have the idea of, I want to do this because I love it, but without having a way to make this a realistic thing, it always will be a hobby. Or if you go and make a living out of it without having a plan, then you're destined to fail. So the key thing is to always look at this as how can I monetize on it? We're in such a commercial industry, it's definitely something that we can take full advantage of. Most of the starving artists don't look at art as a business. They don't realize that they are in the business of art. So you have to understand that you are in a business. You don't sit around all day and expect to be successful at any business that you're running. You need to focus on growing your business, getting leads. You need to hustle. You need to let others know that you exist. And I always say this. I always say that you could be the greatest artist in the world, but if nobody knows who you are, then how are you going to get the jobs? So I think this is critical and this is why branding is so important. Ways to stand out are really critical because without that, how are you going to make this a real job? If I had a store uh, selling candy or whatever it might be, I can't just sit there and make candy all day and expect to make a living. I need to get out there. I need to make people know that I'm available. And the key thing is that in this day and age, we have all the tools at our disposal to do that. It isn't like before where we have a local market and it's more word of mouth or people walking down the street seeing your store. It's completely accessible online. Every opportunity that we have is out there. So it's up to you to utilize those tools to your advantage to get out there, to stand out and to be heard and to build your personal brand. And yes, it is a real industry. Everywhere you look, there's art. Design is a billion dollar industry. Visual effects is a billion dollar industry. Game development is a billion dollar industry. It doesn't matter about the numbers. Everything that you look at these days is art. Designers make the web browsers that you use, the videos that you're on are all content, the phone in your pocket, everything that we see, everything that we do is all art related. Again, this is something that is an industry and it's part of what we do. So whether you're playing games or watching commercials or the billboards that you drive past, the magazines that you look at, the movie posters that you, you enjoy before you see a movie, book covers, whatever you can think of, everything is art. It's all commercial, it's everywhere, and it's a big business. So one thing I'm gonna briefly mention is my fiance, Christina, which I tell the story to death because I find it to be a very fascinating one where her parents would always tell her that art's a waste of time. Now, only a few years ago, she started to look at things differently. She met me, and rather than being discouraged by not pursuing her art career, she was, for once, encouraged. So she tried a few different ideas, some things made money, some things didn't, but then she combined that with the one thing that she's really passionate about, which is cars. So she started putting her art on cars as the vehicle wrap industry started to grow. It was a relatively new industry that she was able to jump on and start to 
showcase her art on these cars, her whole entire career shotgun. So now what she does is she makes a living as one of the top vehicle wrap designers in the industry, focusing on applying her designs, her art, to luxury vehicles, typically for a lot of celebrities. So you can find your own ways to stand out and you can build a business around this. 500K a year. So I mentioned earlier that I came from nothing. My mom and I literally survived on nothing but food stamps. Purely just as a freelancer, I'm able to make up to 500K a year. And this is not including my other businesses. This is just me as a freelancing artist. Now I did a talk on this that's available on my YouTube channel that you can check out. Um, it was filmed in Europe uh, last year. And it talked about hitting a cap with how much I could negotiate and how I was able to flip that on its side and actually able to triple my income just by being able to reposition myself. And again, that's where branding is such a critical part of this. So I've got a lot of friends that I've talked with who are designers and other, other creative fields that are making that much money or a lot more. And the big commonality that they have is that they're not in the average circle. So they're not doing what everyone else does. They take their career seriously, they set goals, and they set out aggressively to really hit them, staying outside of the comfort zone all the time. So there's many different industries out there. There's VR, there's games, there's MR, there's AR, there's print, there's commercials, design, posters, illustration, animation, film. There's so many different ways that we can make money and monetize what we're doing. So just looking at one career path and, and thinking that's all that we can have is very naive because now, again, we have so many different possibilities. I'm just scratching the surface on what's possible, but the key thing is the only person holding you back is you. Now, as my boy Mark Twain always says, whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, this is the time to pause and reflect. So if you're doing exactly what everybody else is doing, maybe you should push yourself harder think outside the box more, or you're going to be getting the same results as everybody else. The more that we look around us and, and see our friends and see how they're doing, and we should be setting a different standard. We shouldn't be setting the standard, the norm, as what everyone else is doing. That should be the bottom layer. Art is not a hobby, but it's not a job. It's a career. So keep in mind that it takes commitment, it takes dedication, and it takes time. Just like becoming a doctor, just like becoming a lawyer, or any other serious career. You need to put in the time and you need to put in the work and you got to be prepared to eat shit in the beginning. Get your hands dirty. That's the best advice I can ever give you. There's no such thing as instant success. The only person holding you back is you. So you need to be willing to live outside of your comfort zone, push yourself, think outside the box and hustle and grind and push yourself further than everybody else. Always. If you do what everybody else does, you're going to be in the same circle. You're going to compete for the same jobs, you're gonna get the same offers as everybody else. It's about having a game plan and learn to build your brand around yourself as well as being able to stand out. Eventually you can turn the table and you'll be the one instead of applying for jobs, the jobs will be knocking on your door. And the more you put in, the more you get out. Like I said, build a roadmap, build that direction, that someday goal that you want to accomplish. I can't stress this enough. Building a roadmap, having a clear goal of where you wanna be is the most critical thing that you can do and then adapt as new opportunities and new experiences come in. But having a direction, having those goals is the difference between having success and having failure or worse, becoming stagnant. So the more that you know where you're going, the more you can push yourself to get there, the more that you can find others who, uh, whose goals align with yours that can help you get to where you're going. And the more that you can pull yourself out of situations when you do get stuck in that same situation, earning the same money, the same routine every single day. So it's about iterating fast inside of your career and the industry is full of possibilities. So it's up to you to set the bar high and keep out of your comfort zone. The only person holding you back is you. Okay, so I hope you found this valuable and I'd love to know what kind of questions you have on this subject. Uh, if there's anything that I mentioned in here that you'd like me to elaborate more on or specifically build a video around that specific thing. Because again, there's things that are actionable and then there's the more high level stuff that a lot of us can have our eyes glaze over and, and think like, yeah, yeah, not for me. At a certain point in your career, a lot of these things are the things that will take you to that next level. Usually we're all looking for those simple tricks in the beginning, like tell me the hack, tell me the cheat code to get to where I'm gonna be. So I'm always in the same situation and then later, it's usually the, the more high level stuff that really resonates and it's usually the thing that I can count back or look back on that's 
been responsible for giving me that next level uh, elevation that I needed. So I'm going to be sharing a keynote pretty soon on branding that I gave in Paris um, late last year. Uh, in addition to that, I've got a few that are more related to negotiating money and um, structuring your freelance career. There's going to be a lot around the subject. So I'm really interested to see what questions you have or more specifically, what topics within what I mentioned that you would like me to lean more into. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Just click the subscribe button because I'll be posting a lot of high value content regularly. So I don't want you to miss out. If you want to see more on the subject of building your personal brand and how to get consistent high paying and creative jobs, make sure to visit alanmckay.com and sign up for my Inner Circle VIP list. It's free. You get access to a lot of private high value content around negotiating high prices, how to craft the perfect email to land jobs consistently, how to build a strong personal brand and attract jobs to you, as well as so much more exclusive content that I only share with my subscribers. So head over to alanmckay.com right now. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it over to you. What do you wanna see covered next? Specifically, how to negotiate more money from your clients, how to build your own personal brand, or is there another subject that I haven't covered here that you want to see more information about? Let me know right now by leaving a comment. Oh.